Right. This lady had a haircut, and it's a very beautiful haircut from the previous designer, whoever that was. Please compliment them for me, won't you? Because they've done a nice design. They really did. Always compliment a fellow artist. Always. Because if you put another artist down, you're really doing a disservice to yourself, and you're putting yourself down. What am I going to do here? I don't know. I'm going to make it up as I go along and take you with me. I haven't pre-planned anything on this particular design. <laughs> Perhaps you can help me. <laughs> well, this is what I feel. I like the idea of asymmetry, so I should keep, keep it or make it a little bit more asymmetrical in its shaping. Where shall I start the haircut? where I need to take out the most hair first to get the definition as quick as possible. Because I know me, I want to get up the rough shape, as, the rough diamond up as quick as possible because I know me, if I don't, I'm going to change my mind halfway through. So I don't want to keep changing my mind, I'll end up with just a round shape. And then rely on slithering it or pointing it or pruning it to make some sort of perimeter shape. So I like the idea of what I did with Amy, so that gives me an idea as well. And I shall go to the back corner on the left to start the haircut here. Why? Because I feel like it. <laughs> right, don't you? Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> now, am I going to do it horizontal? Am I going to start horizontal or am I going to take it vertical? Well, what I'll do is go vertical this time so I can get more gradation to go from the bottom towards the top. How shall I do it in here? Well, I think I'll start on this particular side where the more volume is. I'll take a section out. Now let's think, now maybe I should do that. Oh, I'll do a horizontal line, shall I first? Yeah, why not? Pick all this hair up and go to the corner. Right to the corner. Pick it all up horizontal so the hair is geometric on the top and volumetrics on the bottom. And when in doubt, yeah, thank you. I need all the confidence I can get from you. Make a nice blunt line. This is a crazy question. Don't yell at me. Um, how is it that you take such fat sections but it doesn't look so chopped? It looks... I comb it down and I comb it down and I've started my asymmetrical line in both directions including the dropout. One cut. So I now have some guide to approach it from. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> now I'm going to take a section and go into my vertical cutting. I take a small section at first and turn my fingers around and go vertical this way. I'm approaching that way so I want to see past my finger. If I have my hand around that way and blocking where I'm going, I can only see where I've been. But if I'm approaching that way, then I'll go underarm so I can see where I'm going again. Make sense? <laughs> comb the hair up, look for the guy that I just previously cut, and when in doubt, whack it out. 90 degrees is the angle straight out from where the hair is growing, and I'm pulling it to the corner. Pulling again? I'm sorry? What did you say, pulling it? I'm pulling it straight out to the, from the corner. Oh, okay, a 90 degree angle with the elevation, finger angle, 90 degree angle, vertical. Okay? taking the next section and I'm going to laterally start to laterally direct, meaning bringing it to that one standing still position. Still standing in the same position. I don't have to do a lot to get a lot. Ah, hell with it. I pull all of it now. Don't need to take the little sections. I've already decided what it's going to be. I'm pulling all the hair to there, and if hair gets there, I'll cut it. If it don't, I won't. What is your intent? What is my intent? Yeah. I don't know yet. I haven't figured it out. Oh, you don't know? No. I just decided to do this shape here and then continue to make it up as I go along. As I said in the beginning, I'm making this up as I go along. Okay. I didn't get a magazine out and say, I'm going to do that one. I... A or B or C. You know, I want to make it up so you can see me make it up as I go along. Now I'm cutting the hair down here and I'm following the line that I did previously from the horizontal angle that I pulled up, if you remember. Pull all that hair over. If it reaches it, it gets cut. If it doesn't reach it, then it won't get cut.
want to make sure it's clean as a whistle. Now I know I'm getting it a little asymmetrical through to the opposite side. Now I'll go to the opposite way. Taking a section, see and start me off in my vertical section, underarm, not overarm this time because I'm approaching that way, I want to see past my finger. Bring it up, look for my guide from what I did previously, see it, when in doubt, whack it out. Try and make sure the head position is always you're always conscious of the head position because the spinal column is what you want to see upright. So wherever you push your head, say I wanted to push your head to the opposite corner, then the spinal column is still in line with my eyesight because that's how the design has to fit according to her being upright. Correct? Yes, they roared from the crowd. Yes. <laughs> Anything that protrudes past that angle, I'll cut. Anything that doesn't, I won't. If I want to, after I've done the design, remember, you can go through with a razor and texturizer or whatever you want to start your fancy little finishing touches. But I want to get the shape up first, because I know me, as I said, I'll change my mind halfway around if I don't do that. I know my frailties and my failures. Now I should take all that hair, because not much of it is going to reach at all. Nice enough of that. Where shall I go next? Oh, it's got some layers through there. Maybe I should. Uh... Hmm, that's an idea, Alan. Why don't we do that? Asymmetrical there. Maybe I'll do it in the front too. Why don't I do the same thing I did in the back in the front? Why not? Corner of the front on the left. <coughs> Corner of the front on the left. When in doubt, notice I'm using volumetrics this time. I'm lifting the hair up, going against the law of gravity, pulling all the hair to that one position, holding my fingers horizontally. Sorry. Up here. Putting that hair to that position. Cutting. Take all this hair. Well, no, I'll take a smaller section so I can get the front done because I think I'm going to move through it. Do you tend to cut horizontally if you want a horror line and vertically if you want it softer? Um, horizontal really line. A, hor a horizontal line will give you less length in the gradation. If you go vertical, you'll do more gradation. And yes, you could make a hard line if you wish, like you would in a gradated bob. The, the normal gradated bob was a hard line showing the length. You remember that? Mm -hmm. It was cut horizontal to begin with, then went to vertical as you moved around the sides. Okay? That's what we did at Sassoon's when we first came out with it. Then you go back and cut the fringe? I might. I might go. But let me get the shape up. Now I'm going to go internal of the volume again. But this time I should bring it up, but I should move my hands through. Through. Take a section. Pick it up. With the piece that I previously cut as a guide. There it is. My guide. Cutting straight. And again, because I feel like it, not for any other reason. Offers myself a challenge.
And as as uh, Alan and I were discussing, you do not have to have it blunt. You can point if you wish. You can do what the heck you want. <laughs> With whatever sharp enough. I know I'm a bit facetious, but there you go. I'll come to this little piece in here and pick that up, bring that up and over. You can do that. But I notice everybody's doing that. Even at beauty school they're doing that, you know. So I just don't want to do it. And if you wish, you can do the same thing with a razor through it, anything you want. But remember, when you're texturizing the ends of the hair, you're actually taking out more density of volume. So if you're trying to leave density of volume, then you're kind of fighting yourself. That makes sense too? I do now. Well, as you can see, even on the top, I'm still leaving. I'm still leaving a curvature even on the top. Yeah, like a fan, getting longer towards the outer volume. Okay. Now, what shall I do now for a laugh? Well, yeah. When you were doing the elevation, the Speak louder, please. I told you I'm deaf in one ear and blind in the other. When I noticed you didn't tilt her head in the interior when you were cutting the volume in. If you would have, would that have changed anything? No, only my hand would have gone with her. If the head position changes, and I'm cutting the hair here, and her head position changes, I go with her. I go with her. I don't stay there and let her head go, because then it would change the angles and everything. I follow wherever the head goes, so I keep my eye on that horizontal angle of, of her, uh, vertical angle of her spine. Okay? Now, I like what I did on the side here, so, but I don't like this part in the back there, so I'm going to take out that asymmetry and start in the back here, right in here, and go through this way. Why? Because I feel like it, remember? <laughs> so come up. It's that one position. Come off the angle from that corner and hit it hard. Bring all the hair to one position. Bring it up. Still laterally directing it, so I'm standing in the back even as I'm approaching the side. And at the same time, then, I'm creating my little hardness of line coming off of a softer vertical one. So I'm still keeping it asymmetrical. Okay? Now come over to here on the side by the ear, pick that hair up into the corner one more time. All of it, no sections. I haven't got time and whack it out. <laughs> 